And I'm rolling. What's happening, good folks? Welcome to the C Minus Society. I am Chaz Rogers, your host, along with uh, Transit uh, 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 Transit Pictures. Uh, I'm trying to think of a uh, immortal. I was <laughs> a Transit <laughs> Pictures a God, uh, Transit Pictures fixture of all time. Cam, say something, Cam. What's up? What's happening, it's Cam? <laughs> Cam, I gave you, you're supposed to say something profound right there. I gave you the big, I called you an immortal god fixture. Uh, fixture was probably the worst one out of them all. Fixture. But fixture. Uh, yeah, that was a bad word. <laughs> immortal god was probably, I should have just stopped. You'll just stick yeah. with that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. What's happening, good people? Welcome back to C-Minus Society. Uh, of course, I'm got my man Cam Hill with me on the ones and twos. He's out here producing a podcast. Bam, 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 bam. You got you need one of those, Cam. Yeah, we we'll need like a little like soundboard. Yeah, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> oh yeah, Uh-oh. we ready? Whatever, a bunch of different things. <laughs> uh, so hey, I'm glad you guys are, are tuning in. I'm glad you welcome back. Um, come on in, have a seat. There's a seat next to me here. Pull up, have a nice seat. Hope you guys are in uh, in your car working out. Uh, I mean, not working out in your car. I mean, like in your car driving or working out. Don't do both. That'd be dope, though. That's going to be the future. That's, when Tesla, well, uh, look, when all these electric cars yeah. keep going, they're going to have, like, many vans, right? Pretty much. Oh, man, like, big-ass vans that you can, like, live, just do stuff in. I'm like, cool, I'm going to go uh, work out on my way to work inside my vehicle while it drives. That would be pretty dope. Now, they'll have, have, like, a stationary bike built into the driver's seat, so you just be doing that. You're not actually powering. The, <laughs> right. Some of the electricity could be powering the car, but, like, you're not. To power your car from your legs would be awful, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you got like, oh, we got to go uphill. <sighs> and keep coming. Some of these people, though, off would, the roads. True that. You would really need a carpool, though. That would suck if you fall asleep while you're driving. <laughs> like, uh, that'd be hilarious. I actually can't wait for all that. Man, I would love that. I would have an office in my vehicle that can drive me back. That'd be so dope. I'm I'm all for the electric world. I'm all for the uh, automation. What is it? Automation. 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 Yeah. Autonomy. Autonomy. AI and all that stuff. I'm all ready for it, man. I, the more, I, the less I can do, the, the happier I am. Really. Now I'm sorry for everybody who's losing jobs. That's gonna suck. That's gonna suck for you guys. Not me though. It's gonna suck for all of you. But welcome this world of AI. I'm ready, man. I want a little robot that talks to me like my best friend. I'm ready for it. Same. I want my car to talk to me. Yes. He's like, what's happening, Chaz? What's up, man? How we do? You ready? Oh, I'm feeling good. Let's go. <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. That'd be so dope. Or just to tell you, like, if something's wrong, what's actually wrong, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I want it to be better. Ah, my leg. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. Oh, I want it. Oh, shit. Man, hit a fucking pothole. I want my car to cuss me out. I need gas, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, anyway, <laughs> it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Uh, today, I, like I said, uh, 2019 has been an amazing year. Um, I got to be a father for a whole year. She was born in November of 2018, but yeah, it was pretty much 2019, you know. And um, I had my first year of fatherhood, man, and um, it was pretty, pretty dope. It was way better than I thought it was gonna be. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be not awful, but I thought it was gonna suck. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like, all right, this is awful, but um. It was so dope, and I'm so excited for uh, the future. I actually like my kid, and I just love her. I like her. She's fun, and she's one. So I heard they get terrible at two. Then I heard they become smart asses at three, and then I heard this is all downhill to the teenagers, and they just hate you. So we'll see what, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> but as of now, she is my best friend I've ever had in my entire life. So, so far, man, so good. But I guess you had to be really close with somebody who you changed their butt, all right? That's a real friendship. Cam, you changing my ass ever? No. <laughs> Come on, Cam. Okay, well, we're not in an extreme situation, so. If we're in an extreme situation, you'll change me? We'll see. <laughs> Cam, you're not going to wipe my ass for me, man? Hopefully by that time we'll have robots to just do it. <laughs> Cam's not a true friend, guys. Cam, I change your ass right now, man. That's how much of a friend I am, guys. All of you, too. Everybody looking at me right now. Come home, change all your asses. Send me your addresses. <laughs> <laughs> changing everybody's ass what are we talking about all right so i'm talking about uh this episode we're gonna talk about what i learned uh in my first year being a father all right being a parent in general um because i I'm, I'm married and uh learned a lot about parenting together uh i don't haven't done i guess technically we're co-parents but co-parents is usually people who don't live together in the same house uh so um it's been it's been so interesting all right so let me tell you so the first day out 
Let me tell you about her first how how the first day she was the first night we took her home was one of the worst days of my entire life. It was I've been to jail. Uh, I've caught my uh, ex girlfriend cheating on me. All right, I've been like um, knocked unconscious before, beat up, and it was still one of the worst days I've ever had. We took my daughter home. And uh, we could not figure out why she couldn't stop crying. She cried the entire night. We got home. The entire day and night she cried. And as a new, brand new parent, it's panic city. The two of us were like, we can't figure out what's wrong. We changed her. Uh, we're trying to feed her. Uh, I'm like, are you cold? Are you hot? Like, what? And all you get is eh, like the screeching eh, of a newborn. It's not like some kid who's three. Like, hey, quit crying. This is of a brand. You, she's like, I have no idea what's happening. I'm awfully, I'm uncomfortable. Figure it out. And we could not get her to stop. It was awful. It was the whole night. We and then we had an appointment for the doctor next morning. We went in there like shaking. <laughs> we went in there like I don't know, traumatized. And now, even now, when I hear a baby cry, I shiver. I go like, ugh, ugh. it's awful. You know. So what we figured out was happening was that. At the time, um, and this is a whole nother discussion. I should bring her on. Actually, have to, we should have a discussion about this. But she was having trouble with breastfeeding, and we didn't know the baby was just hungry. All right, but that happens a lot. It's very common for moms to have issues with breastfeeding. Okay, and we didn't know how common it was. And so when we got to the doctor, they were just like, "Oh, just give her some formula." And we we're like, well, "How can nobody tell that? Tell us that shit when we we could have said there's a whole night of her crying had we known, but." You know, they have, like, lactation specialists, and they have, like, uh, breastfeeding classes, and they do, do all these things, and some of it just doesn't matter, you know? They have, like, lactation cookies, you know? And my wife felt a certain way. She felt like less of a mom, less of a woman because she had troubles breastfeeding, you know? That's something that would really uh, fuck with you, you know what I mean? So it was like a whole – especially when you see other women who have, like, <laughs> milk squirting out anytime they sneeze, you know? <laughs> it was like uh, – which you've seen the opposite also. You know, you've seen women who produce too much milk. And it was like really trippy that the like something so simple as giving somebody like a hesitant. I tell people now, maybe you have a kid, yo, just buy some formula just in case, um, you know, that, that they have issues breastfeeding or the kid has issues latching on so that kid can still eat. You know, our, our baby wasn't really breastfeeding. She seems fine. Or maybe she's a dummy and I'm a dummy. And I don't know. All right. I have no idea. <laughs> but we haven't seen a single effect of it being different from her breastfeeding. And I'm sort of like her immune system seems good. We haven't had an issue. I don't know. I guess we have to compare it later on, uh, but I haven't seen one difference. So I don't want any new moms out there either to feel like they're less of a mom, less of a woman because they have issues breastfeeding. It's very common. You know what I mean? It has no it changes nothing how much that child loves you. It has uh, changes nothing how much you love that child has nothing how, care, uh, changes, nothing how much you provide, how much you care. None of that changes. OK, so don't let that affect your mentality. And uh, maybe that's part of like postpartum depression. Maybe. Maybe not, but I get how it affects you, but don't let that affect you. Now, as a man, watching my wife struggle, like, mentally and physically kind of with this, especially with the, man, Cam, you would not understand what women go through after they have a baby, man. The 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 healing process by itself, and she didn't even have a cesarean. That's a whole other thing. Mm. But the healing process, the the amount of, you know, the stitches, the diapers they have to wear because their whole vagina is broken, <laughs> right? <laughs> like the pain they had just trying to get up and down and still. And imagine this, man. I feel bad for single moms in general. Like you got to have a baby, go through that physically and still take care of a child. Mm -hmm. Some people still have to go to work. My wife was like to take some time off, but some people can't. There are moms who usually have kids and go back to school, go to work the next day or so. You know what I mean? It's, it's awful. It's really trippy to see what some people go through, you know, especially – uh, so and then what I learned about postpartum, um, all right, this is, this is this is what I learned about postpartum for women, I think. If I got this, I probably fucked this all up. <laughs> Let's see if I got it right. But when the placenta comes out, the placenta has a whole bunch of different hormones, right? And then I guess it sends uh, women's balance, uh, hormonal balance off the scale when it comes out because it had all the stuff they've had for nine months and now it's gone. So it takes some time. So then it affects their mood and all this other stuff, right? Hormonally, right? And so I guess postpartum uh, can affect your hormones your uh your stress levels i forgot what the hormones are called that's the um what's the stress hormone called uh, don't know I, there's a word for it <laughs> something i'll find it <laughs> and uh and then your your happy hormone what's the happy one you know what dopamine one. dopamine yeah yep, dopamine is a happy one dang what's the stress one called i gotta figure, find it i'll find it i'll find it for you good guys but there's a stress one um so anyways uh it messes with you and it throws all those stuff on balance and that's why people go like oh women are so emotional one living she's more crying and she's sad and it's like oh, yeah 
Yeah, she literally had a whole another person's chromosomes in her now that are out, and a whole another a whole another system of, of of hormones that are in them that are gone now overnight, and that changes. And it actually takes women a while, man. It takes like a, they say it takes a, it could be up to like two years for women to start feeling normal again. There's three adrenaline, cortisol, uh-huh, uh-huh. cortisol, and another one, noropine frame. Mm, I don't know that one. Okay. Cortisol is definitely one. That's a stress one. I think there's one more also. But cortisol is the one I know. Adrenaline, I guess. I mean, we all know adrenaline, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but cortisol is definitely a stress hormone. People like some people's stress hormones are overactive, and people can gain weight and you know from stress and all that good stuff. If your cortisol uh, is too high, if cortisol levels are too high, and that's what I've learned in my readings over time. Good people. Um, so cortisol, you know, stress hormone. So that was our first day. That's pretty much what I learned. Our first day, it was like horrible. And who knew that a couple ounces of milk could have made it all better and yes they uh they poop and pee every they pee literally every two hours you have to feed them every two hours serotonin serotonin thank you good sir it's the opposite of dopamine okay okay there it is cortisol and serotonin those are the two stress hormones Uh, you guys can see why i forgot those those are hard to remember (laughs) right (laughs) um so uh yeah like when we were like (laughs) We were trying to figure out. We took it to the. We 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 didn't feel ready to come home. First off, I was like, "Yo, people send they send you home after a, a day or two with the baby." You're like, "Yo, uh, uh, I, I no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to take it home." Isn't there like a training thing we do now? Isn't there like a, some kind of something like then we all get together and we sit in a circle or some shit? Like, no, they just literally send you home with this newborn being, and uh, you got to figure it out from there. So it's more than normal to feel underqualified <laughs> is more than normal and you got to have some help man the more help you can get the better man it was just me and my wife her mom came for a while my mom came for a while, but everybody had to go back to their lives and it was just me and her for months you know my mom came later on but it was just us for like four or five months and i can't no for maybe like six months and i can't imagine like yo my wife felt bad for having to like go to work and send her wife send the baby to daycare. We had to do that. And she's like she's 4 months old and I got to send her to daycare. She felt awful, you know? She felt guilty. Why that whole, that whole guilt thing is real. You feel guilty for everything. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> this is going to happen. Your baby's going to start rolling and moving, all right? And she's going to fall off the bed, guys. It's going to happen. All right? Your baby's going to fall off the bed. But listen to me. The durable creatures all right, don't feel bad once you, once you hear that thunk and that cry, okay? Because it's going to happen. Every baby has fell off the bed, all right? Couch, bed, whatever. We, we would set up pillows <laughs> when you started learning how to roll, <laughs> like around the bed, so when she fell off. Because sometimes you sleep, you put it in the crib, yeah, you try, to, you try to do what you can. I'm going to tell you why it's hard to put babies in the crib. Because when that baby wakes up every two hours to eat, you're sick of getting up and putting it in the crib. You know what I mean? So you just slip, you pull out the titty, and the baby suckles. You know what I mean? You keep the milk. You, you get, you're exhausted, guys. Okay? You're exhausted. So, anyway, that's what's going to happen. When the baby starts rolling, moving around, you're going to turn around in one second, they're going to be on the floor crying. Don't feel awful. The baby's head is tough. It's the hardest thing you'll ever feel. There's no pain like a headbutt from a baby. My baby's forehead is so hard. You can literally feel it. Like, like there's, a, there's a soft spot that's in the back of the head. That forehead... It's hard. It's a rock. It's awful. <laughs> I've been headbutted. I she's broke like I've like busted my lips several times from my baby headbutt. And then you think she felt something? No. She's like, Kapow! Hmm. Ah! <laughs> like <laughs> cycle. So my first six weeks to two months of fatherhood was pretty awful. I felt really bad. I didn't feel like like you're happy. That baby's healthy. You're happy. You're like, yeah. You're taking pictures and shit. But you're just like, you know, this is a lot, man. This baby cries all the time. Um, I can't go do shit. Um, I don't know how my wife is feeling. She's she's she goes from happy to sad all the time, and it just it messes with you. You know, my first like two, I was really unhappy having a child for about six weeks. I was like, this is a mistake. Uh, we're gonna regret this for the rest of our lives. <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be what ruins our our marriage. I was like, this is this is awful. I really felt like that for like six eight weeks. And this is stuff we talked about. But then, I was playing with her one day. Right, I was playing with her, and I was trying to like tickle. I think I was like I was doing this thing, and I was like biting her face. I was like, ow, ow. and then she did it back, and she was like, and I was like, oh, you, oh, and that changed everything. Once series five, it changed everything. After that, that was my homie. 
And after that, we that was like, yo, this is my best friend, man. This is what we do. We play, man. And then once we started like just playing and biting each other's faces and stuff like that, I've had the best time. I've had the I've had the most incredible year uh, of being a father after that moment. Up until then, I was like, we messed up. We're, all right, condoms. Now on. Everybody wear condoms. Everybody wear condoms everywhere. Mm. <laughs> right, no, having, I don't care if I have a condom on now. I'm going to work. Going to the gym, condom on. And I was like feeling awful. But it changed, and it will change. You, it, 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 it changes, man. So I have a good friend, my, my homegirl, Angelina Spicer. She is like an um, advocate for uh, postpartum depression. Um, she's a comedian also, and she's having this huge – she just did a comedy special about postpartum. Um, she did a whole documentary about postpartum. She was just, I think, in Essence magazine about postpartum. Um, she's been featured all over. She does conferences for, bar, for postpartum. Um, she's one who's really making like – there's really – it's an under – it's, it's not talked about nearly enough about postpartum depression for males and for women. Men get postpartum also because it's really just how you feel after the baby is. That's what partum, right? Or post after partum is when baby's delivered post, right? There's prepartum, postpartum. Got it? All right. So how you feel about after the, when a baby comes out is huge because it's so mental and it affects every single thing you do. Everything, every single way. Like your anxiety should go up. It's more than like like I like when we started driving in the car. When, once my wife was pregnant, we were driving in the car. She'd be like ah ah nah nah slow down. You're like yo, you what is happening? She's like ah I don't know. But it's like the hormones trying to keep the baby alive. It's a natural instinct, right? Um, anytime they're out together, especially nowadays, and like not that human trafficking is new. It's not new, but there's way more cameras around, and you see a whole videos of kids getting kidnapped. They didn't snatch out of people's arms. Like, I get worried every time they're together without me. I think, like, I'm always, like, my anxiety is always high when they're not at home. And I'm always calling, hey, you guys good? <laughs> like, no one's kidnapped, right? <laughs> Am I got kidnapped? No? Good. Okay, great. That's how I feel. Like, it all kind of changes on how you see things, man. We go somewhere. I'm at, I'm at the mall now. I'm looking for anybody who's trying to snatch my child. That's what I think. We go into parking lots. I want to look under every, every car. I'm like, anybody hiding in here? You know, that's that's what happens when I'm when I put in my baby in her seat. I'm always looking over my shoulder and I want that. That's the thought now. Like it's always panic city on anybody trying to kidnap you. And that's a personal anxiety that I have, you know. Now, hopefully, like, you know, I'm sure everybody like your your anxiety for keeping your kid alive is going to increase. But some people have it bad. Some people have it. They don't want to get out the house. You know, they don't want the baby out the house. They don't want to let their babies go anywhere, which I understand because this world is sick. Sick people. There's sick people here. You guys are sick. Um, there was, I live off of, a, I'm in L.A. I'm going to tell you guys my address. <laughs> I live in L.A. And uh, there was, you guys see this thing about this girl who got snatched by a van. She was, uh, they got caught in a, one of those ring, uh, what's the ring thing called, Cam? On the doors, the ring doorbells. They got caught in like a ring door cam, ring doorbell uh, camera. And this girl was walking in a van, put up and just snatched her. And she was screaming for help and nobody came. And it was snatched. What? And it's it crazy. And it's on, a, yes. It's crazy. The big thing now too is the child safety locks on. Uh, yes, on Ubers, Ubers and, and shit. Yes, yes. It's all. It's all nuts. Check the door. You have to. Like I just. Ah, God, I want to tell people just don't get in. It's very convenient. Yeah. <laughs> but I understand. I'm. Like, and then you see those like Ubers for kids. Hell no, you guys are out your damn mind. You're out your damn mind. I'm not putting my kid in a car with a stranger. You got your. You got your damn mind. All right, anyways, um, so if you want to learn more about postpartum, you can always, uh, outside of going to a like therapist, be, uh, don't feel afraid or shy of going to a therapist. Somebody's going to tell you you got the baby blues. Don't let them denounce what, you, what it is. If you're feeling a certain way, go seek help, man. Go talk to other people. Go to conferences. There's a ton of them. You can check out Angelina. Angelina has a ton of stuff where she talks about stuff, excuse me, in a, in a humorous way to make you know that you're not alone. You're not alone, people. Okay? All right. So. Let me tell you some highlights. Let me give you the highlights of uh, of uh, having a kid. I told you all the panicky stuff. <laughs> I told you all the horrible <laughs> stuff about having a kid. There's a lot of highlights, man. Right? It's, it's pretty dope, man. Once they start, like, you see them looking at their fingers and looking at their toes and stuff like that. You see them be more unaware, right? My my baby, she's uh, she's half Mexican, so she can speak half Spanish. All right? It's pretty bad right now. All she can say is mas when she wants more food. She sees food. She goes, mas? <laughs> I'm like, she's going to be a fat girl. Love it. I'm all for it, right? Uh, and then like we'll, we'll, we'll like you know speak Spanish and English to her not me so much because my Spanish is muy mal <laughs> it's very bad alright but um, it's cool to watch them like learn and I can't wait to watch her grow up in uh, like uh, uh, two languages and I can't wait to watch her grow up and like she like kids don't listen 
all that no no stop you're going your kids are suicidal <laughs> every child tries to kill themselves um in, in multiple ways um so, you, so don't just say no you got to like get up read it redirect and kind of distract them you know what i mean you got to distract them with something else because they're gonna put everything in their mouth you got to vacuum often i hate doing anything i've told you this before i hate getting out the bed I try to make her like a, a bum. I'm like, hey, watch these cartoons with me, you know? And I don't let her watch like Mickey Mouse stuff. We watch what I watch. Right? <laughs> her first her first day out, <laughs> we watched the whole Married with Children from the first episode <laughs> all the way to the last. We watched Mad Anime. She's seen more blood and gore than any baby should. Um, so we watch stuff all the time, and I'm just like, and she just, she literally just watches like, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> And it's like mud guts pouring out. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, nah. And now she laughs. And uh, that's the kind of fool I'm raising. A little one who laughs at bloody murder. And I love it. Um, so you got to really keep a close eye on these on these babies. You got to lock up everything. Man, it, before we got the little electric socket thing, she was always trying to put her finger in there. Like, Jesus. It's like from Tony Baker's. Uh, exactly from that. His, <laughs> his bit. Exactly from that. They try to get in everything and put everything in their mouth. Everything, no matter what, be handed straight to the mouth. You're like, oh, <laughs> everything. Is this edible? Huh? Is this edible? It's like the first thing they probably right. She's like taste. Mm-hmm. You know, and she didn't. Yeah, it was it was wild. Oh, and they spit up a lot early on. That's adorable. Don't wear that night. <laughs> I was going somewhere. I was going somewhere, and I got all dressed up, and then I was handling her, and she vomited all over my shit. And I was like, all right, guys, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it at all. Um, but it's so dope to like watch your kid grow. I've been loving like even watching her. T- I've recorded her first steps. You know what I mean? It's like they're the awful raggedy newborn deer steps. You know, but it's like the coolest thing uh, to see her and see her recognize you. She, I'll be like, hey, go follow Gigi. That's a grandma. She'll go chase her down. You know, bang on the door while you're taking a shit. It's all hilarious. It's all hilarious. And I'm not. The type of like I don't sing ABCs and stuff with her. We just make a ruckus. I'm probably the worst person to raise a kid because whatever's funny goes to me. I go. <laughs> <laughs> she plays with her mom's brawls. I hand her those. She's like, I don't give her those. I'm like, but it's hilarious, you know. So I'm the worst example of a of a of a good mate and father <laughs> in those ideas. All right, but here's what I would say. So when you're raising this kid, everybody has a you know aunts, cousins, blah blah blah. Everybody wants a piece. All right. So my thing is like, yo, lay down your rules ASAP. You know what I mean? Don't let anyone else affect what you want to do with your child. I didn't let anyone um, have, you know, both sides actually have like a baptism. Um, I said no, and not because I'm not religious, but because I don't believe that. Um, I don't want to do anything just to do it without outside of my child understanding what it is, just purely for the sake of religion. You know what I mean? I don't really, I'm not a real great practicing uh christian so if you don't do it with sincerity to me it's hypocrisy you know what i mean and i don't want to teach her hypocrisy i don't want to teach her this and then do one thing and and say one thing and do another i don't want to do that so i go you're going to be old enough one day to understand what you want to do you know my child came out healthy people like oh would you want your child be blessed my my child is blessed i'm blessed my child's blessed Uh, i already have (laughs) blessings you know i'm not worried about that i'm not worried about my child being blessed i know my child's blessed the other stuff is like I take religion seriously for what it is. If you're really going to believe in it, then believe in it. I'm not going to have her get baptized and not go, you know, to church with her and to teach her and grow up in that. Cause I'm not going to do that. Now that I know that. So I'm going to go get her baptized. Like it's, it doesn't make sense to me. I was like, that's just doing something just to do it. That's kind of cultish without the education behind hmm. it. You know True. what I mean? So that's why I say no, but I, I let them know it's like, it's a no way. So they both tried to convince me to do it. And I was like, nah, man, I kind of regret we had a birthday party for her and uh, I wasn't going to do anything big. And then uh, I let her sister kind of take over because you know, they said they wanted to do it. And I kind of regret it because it kind of, you know, had issues. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was kind of expensive, stuff like that. And I was like, yep, that's what happens when you kind of relent. Like you let other people dictate stuff and I'm not going to do that anymore. Now. And I had no problem being a dick. You know what I mean? I got no issue being an asshole. Chaz, Chaz is such a jerk. You goddamn right he is. Right? <laughs> He's got no problem. But I'm like, you gotta you gotta make sure that your word is law and that people and you got you man, sometimes you gotta be rude with your children. Not with your children, but to other people about your children. Because people will do and say and do other stuff, you know what I mean, without your uh permission or consent. And then they'll think you're crazy or think you're an asshole, which is fine. Which is fine. I'm a dick. I'm an asshole. Great. Appreciate your thoughts and all the good love. I don't, you know, 
I had to keep that stuff separate. You know what I mean? Um, so you make the rules, man. Don't let us influence what you want to do for your kids and stuff like that. All right. And my last thing would be like to have a plan. Like, you know, we have a plan in place for when we want our child to start reading and to start learning. Um, when we start, you know, having a routine for her um, from the morning to the end, when we start like, you know, having baths and whatnot for her. But uh, like we're about to get to the place where we start teaching her the ABCs and how to count. But it's like having this plan we do every single day with her so she can learn, you know, having like having teaching her how to sit down in one place and behave. Right. <laughs> like You got to start teaching this stuff now, you know, and um, like don't it's the same with like, you know, the financing, uh, teaching her hospitality, hospitality, hosp <laughs> we just went through this hospitality. You know, I want to teach her how to be sweet and how to be nice, how to be giving, how to share. She's a single child, so you got to teach her how to share with us now um, and how to be giving, uh, uh, you know, the volunteering. It's also if I want to show her and we have a plan in place to like show her this stuff at certain months and certain ages and stuff like that now, you know. So it's not just about like having a kid and hoping they grow up and be like, oh, well, good luck. Go to school. You know what I mean? It's like all that, of course, as we know, starts in the home. You know what I mean? So we try to make sure that we have a plan in place for days, times, months, years, where we want her to be and what we want to have accomplished with her by then. You know what I mean? So just have a plan. Plan it out. You know? Plan it out, guys. That's it. That's all I got. Any thoughts, questions, Cam? No. I think it was good. Yeah? That's my experience on my first year so far. And, you know, everything is kind of in a nutshell. Uh, it's hard to tell a whole year and you know 30 minutes but it's been great man i'm really enjoying it. i'm really excited about year two I, I hope it goes uh super dope she's hilarious she has really good timing man we'll laugh and she'll like yeah <laughs> she'll laugh at something behind it or sometimes she'll just like she's just good she's got great time and i hope she got that from me i hope she's hilarious i much rather her be hilarious than smart <laughs> yeah. i much rather her be like i got this great joke instead of like what two plus two is I'll be like, yeah, you can get by without learning. They got phones and calculators now. Tell me this joke. You can't buy a charm, guys. There's no calculator for that. All right. All right, man. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, if you guys have any tips for me going into year two parenting, let me know. All right? All right? Anything would be wonderful. You know any programs? Do you know any places to take her? Uh, any gymboree kind of things? I don't think gymboree is the right place. Anything. You know? Uh, comment. We can make this a place where we all help each other build and grow. All right? Okay, good people. Thank you guys for visiting. Uh, like, share, subscribe, tell your homies. Uh, shout out to Cam and Transit Pictures. All right, you guys take care. <laughs>